but for simplicity, I provided you two links that tells you how to deal with random numbers. <coughs> Sorry. And so can you give us a demo with the second one? Because second one seems to be a little bit weird, actually. Like how she was scrolling down the data from that week. I couldn't get that. She Either. was just using the function of F9, just changing the random numbers. We are going to do it right now. So don't oh, worry. I thought she's just scrolling her mouse and she's getting new data. So no, no, no. She was just pressing on F9 because okay. every time she presses on F9, new yeah. numbers are generated. I see. And we, we will be having the same functionality because we already updated our Excels in the beginning of the class and we, we will be able to use that as well in our excel sheet so if you guys simply can just fold, uh, download the lab 3 excel sheet please that is already available on Ola. Okay. and I'm, go I'm going to share my screen as well but you have it handy as well But sir, we do not have to memorize these these uh, formula, Anna. Like we we can anytime we need, we allowed oh, to get it. Sure, obviously. Because it it feels like a hacker. Like we get all the kind of adding of, details of, and all. Let yeah. me tell you, that is why I provided you the link. Otherwise, I will just show my screen and forget about it. <laughs> I provided you so that you can. Visit it anytime you wish and okay. use it as guidance if you need to. Okay. So no worries at all about memorizing every function. All right. But your Excels are now ready to handle such functionalities. We prepared your Excels by just applying the add-in functions. So shouldn't be a problem. I am just sharing my screen at the moment and I will just want you to confirm once it is on the screen. Yes. Can you see my lab three yes, screen? Yes. The Excel sheet. Okay, perfect. Yes, sir. So it, it, it is very well organized sheet. So we are going to start with sheet one and it clearly contains all the elements that I have shown you with the Word document. So if you can't see it at the moment, no hassle at all. But one of your colleagues has already shared it on the chat, so you can download the Word versions as well. But let's start. We are dealing to simulate the duration of a project. You know, normally what we have been doing for a simple case, we were just identifying critical paths. But this time, rather than calculating it every time, we can get a proper estimation by just running a Monte Carlo simulation. But as I told, if we run it only once, we will get obviously an approximate solution. If we replicate the number of simulations the more we run for example we run it two times five times ten times hundred times two hundred times thousand times million times the more we get the simulation and we take mean values of the simulations it will take us much closer to the real exact solution okay so as I mentioned, we are going to estimate the project duration through a Monte Carlo simulation. So we will now see how we can build a Monte Carlo simulation for the duration time of a small project. The diagram on the right, which is this one, illustrates and the illustrates the outline of a small project the boxes from a to j illustrate the different activities that have to be completed to complete the whole project so we need to finish them all to reach the finishing note 
Just recall your PMF knowledge. Every project starts with a start node and finishing node so that now you are aware that those graph contains all the tasks in between the start and the finish node. Let's move on. Some of the activities have to be completed in sequence. Some of them can be completed in parallel. The arrows indicate which activities have to be completed before others can begin. So just simply see the table below. To begin, to begin with, we will assume we know the exact duration time of each activity. So we will just be simply using the estimated durations. And we now know the dependencies of each activities. It has been provided to us. So, and this activity, you know, you see the reference, it has been taken from there. So if you further want to read it through a paper version, you can just visit and find it from Woodward, page 224. So, moving on with the sheet 2, we are moving on with the description of the exercise. To work out the duration of the whole project, we need to work out the duration of the key paths from start to finish, and then see which one is the longest which of these is the longest one okay so we already provided the critical paths available within that project and if you recall throughout the pmf lectures we already mentioned that there could be more than one critical path so that then we apply we can apply some crushing activities and in this example, the critical paths have been identified already. In the given case, the longest path is root CFH. Therefore, the duration of the entire project will be 150 weeks. We just checked C, F and H because the durations have been given. C takes 50 days plus F takes 40 days plus 60 days. C, F, H, 50 plus 40 is 90, plus 60 is 150 weeks. It has been already depicted and shown on the table. As a note, a software package such as Microsoft Project would do this and a lot more easy way. If you want to identify the you know, durations of the project, etc. But, however, Microsoft Project doesn't have the functions for Monte Carlo simulation that Excel has. So that is why you got now upgraded capabilities of Excel. So in order to run Excel for Monte Carlo simulations, it is much more favorable tool when compared to any other free versions, such as like Microsoft Project and Project Libre, etc. Whenever you need a Monte Carlo simulation, you can just opt with Excel usage. Anyway, let's move on about our exercise. We have just seen the numbers for the given project. We have identified the longest path and we already identified the duration for the longest path. That will be 150 weeks. Now, coming to our exercise, we are now introducing some uncertainty in the project duration time. We assume that each activity time has a normal probability distribution with mean and standard deviations as given below. Because any project, any task can have a mean and a standard deviation. You know, it can go back and forth and there is standard deviation within it. So, and now it is becoming much more uncertain because the numbers are not equal to each other. Every task has different standard deviations, which means there will be some incompatibilities throughout the project timeline. Therefore, it is important to get them on the table 
and use them in our approximations, our calculations. We already mentioned that the mean values for each task and standard deviations for each task have been listed on the table below here. We have then used the random number generator to produce 10 different times for each activity. I will show you in the solution section how we done it. And we then calculate 10 different possible project durations. We calculated the durations and we have seen that the initial calculation was 150 weeks. And once we did 10 different calculations of possible critical paths, we see that the shortest one became 131 and longest one became 171. And moving on, what we are doing, we are now extending the simulation to sample 100 times. We will repeat this 100 times. So you see, this table will be filled for 100 replications. But we will not going to fill it manually. We will just show you how it is done. So each time we are going to take the durations of each path for a and D, path, critical path of AD, critical path of BEG, CEG, AJ, CFH, and AEG. For each critical path, each run of probabilistic durations will change. Therefore, the path long, length of paths will change on each simulation. But we will calculate it 100 times and then we are going to take the longest of all so that we will approximate to a proper answer at the end. If we extend this 100 to, let's say, 1 million, it will be a more accurate answer, of course. But imagine we are doing beforehand starting the project. We are trying to assume the project length even before we started. We already calculated that, you know, that task A will take, let's say, seven days or task B will take, let's say, 10 weeks, blah, blah, blah. But obviously there are some delays, expected delays in them, and there are some variations between them. And now we are trying to see, trying to observe all possibilities that might happen. And we are trying to get an outcome, get filter them and get an outcome of those all possible actions that might come to life. Any variation, any combination of those variations altogether, we are trying to approximate a single value. We just done it in this example with 100 simulations. OK, now let's come to the solutions. We now introduce some uncertainty in the project duration time, as we mentioned. We assume that each activity time has a normal probability distribution with mean and standard deviation times given below. We already mentioned those. Now we then used random number generator. We will show you how to do that and you saw how we did that, you know, in the videos. We just simply apply it with RAND INV formula. Random inverted numbers. We then calculate 10 different possible project durations and it is now between 131 and 171. I will show you what we mean. OK. <coughs> we have just calculated based on those table 
the mean values and the standard deviations, we calculated project minimum time, which we can put the how we calculated that we took the minimum of that, that column and that column is the longest path durations and this one is the probabilistic calculations those have been generated through number generators i will show you what i mean in a second So, you simply generate the numbers here. What I ask from you is to press on F9 on your screens. For this given example, it is our sample. What does happen once you press on F9? It refreshes the data. Yes, exactly. Can all of you see it? You know, just keep pressing on F9 once you are pressing on any of the data here. So each of them, it will refresh the data. It generates new random set of data. for each run of simulation. So based on the numbers assigned randomly for each task of A, B, C, D till J, and we now know the paths because it says A and D. The values for A and D changes. Okay, so the new calculation for A and D will change. Every time you press it, in my screen, A and D is 8 plus 7, so it is 15. I am not changing this one at the moment, but you can see the change on your screens. Can you just confirm whether you guys all see it? Uh, because sir, I, I, don't, want... I don't have it. <clears throat> yes, sir. I don't have it because I feel like the numbers are not gener uh, randomly generated on my screen, uh, on my Excel file. They're just copy paste from maybe another file. Uh, did you did, did you did you apply to your random number generators which we have done in the beginning of the class have you applied your add-ins uh, yes yes sir can you just refresh yes, your excel uh, i've been closing it and and opening it again yeah just just try it it should be because otherwise which means that your add-ins are inactive at the moment <laughs> And Jaffer, uh how come I I'm the only one who cannot see the chat channel? Like uh, I can't write anything on the chat. It says chat channel meeting is only available for team member. Which means that you are not a member of the team yet. Oh. Which, and then what you can do, just drop Dr. Hazar an email and let him to add you to the channel. Okay, I see. Thank you. Yeah. No worries. So the numbers are not changing. I don't know why. The, uh, when we, when I press F9, the, there's no change in the numbers. Then your Excel is not active. You probably couldn't apply your add-ins. Sure. Uh, uh, I, I it's, it's already in the add-ins. Uh, so I already checked the add-ins. It's, it's added. Yeah, the same for me. I mean, the audience, everything is ticked already. Everything is installed. It doesn't transform the numbers into randoms. And it's just the formula. Yama, come. Yama, come. 
the the formula yeah, in the for example in a a one yeah, uh, in the table uh, yeah I have no formula it's just uh eight point two point like eight point two zero nine eight nine it's not equal to random something all you need to do is just to come on it just get on any box yeah. click on this it one, once and then press f9 yeah it doesn't do anything because it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't work it doesn't work it doesn't work here too is there anyone who can change the numbers so it refreshes no sir it's not yes, working I no, sir. so maybe you can try it yourself on your computer and you will see because there's no reason why you would, it would change if in the formula section if there's no equal to random. It's not working. I don't know if you see it, like the, uh, the function in this section is just a number. It's not equal to random of something, so there's no way it could change. No, but this this Excel sheet has been saved as it is, so it, mm -hmm. it is an auto generated sheet. So it should be, you know, the function is embedded in it. It is readily provided to you. That is why we we can apply F nine. Honestly, it doesn't work online. So and and I've been checking the add-ins and they are they are added. So. Just, just give me a moment to check it. What's going wrong with it? Okay. So sure. let's take let's take two three minutes break, and I'll catch you back up in two minutes. So okay. the other sheet is working. The other sheet it's working when we press F nine. The other sheet it's working, but not this one. All right. I I will double check it, and maybe the version you downloaded has some incompatibility. I'll take it off from Aula and reapply it to Aula. I think there is something wrong when Aula is downloading. Okay. Excel sheets. Because it happened with the Word documents. You know, those are on the system. Some of you some of you could download it. I don't know. It is some compatible. Just give me two minutes and I will check what's going on. No worries, no worries. I, I'm now logging it, o logging off, and I will join the same link in five minutes. Okay, guys. Okay, no worries. Just sit, ch five minutes break, and I'll catch you back in five minutes. Okay, guys. Okay. I don't know why, but Aula is blocking my Excel as well. Let's move on with the second exercises. Okay, it it is more or less the same thing that we apply the number generation. Let's move on with the second one. Okay, the exercise four. I will double check it and up upload a proper working to the system because I don't have the original file as well. I am downloading it from Aula and it is still doing the same thing to me as well. So what I recommend is just to have a go on the second exercise, lab four. It will be doing the same functionality. This time it is regarding to profit and loss rather than time. Hopefully this one will be working. I checked it, it worked for once. Yeah, me too, it worked. All right, guys, let me share my screen and let's continue with the second exercises. Sorry for the hassle. I'll double check why Aula is blocking it. So let me just rejoin.
So you guys, let me try the second one. Lab four. Can you see my screen? Just confirm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, please, we can see. Yes, sir. I will double check yes. the other one, but as I, as you have seen, it is very straightforward procedure. So once the Excel file is changed with the correct one, I will let Dr. Hazan know about it and he will upload the correct folder properly working or we will talk to our team why the system is blocking it and then hopefully it will be resolved. OK, so let, let, okay, let's, sir. let's move on with the second exercise. <coughs> In this spreadsheet, it will take you through the steps of building a very simple Monte Carlo simulation using Excel. Start with this sheet, sheet one, and then move through the other sheets one by one, second, third, and the fourth one. We will use a very simple profit model where profit is equal to revenue minus the cost. Okay, so simply the value from revenue and then subtract the cost from it will be equal to profit. Very straightforward. In this first example, there is no uncertainty. We know what the costs are and we know what the revenue is. Therefore, we can just calculate profit as below. OK, when, when we click on the profit, we see that it is equal to C21 minus B21, which is like C21. You see, this is column C, row 21, minus B21. So, C21 minus B21 is 2000 minus 1000 is equal to 1000. This is very straightforward. There is no uncertainty in it yet. Let's move on to the second sheet to see how we are going to incorporate the uncertainty. To model the uncertainty here, we use Excel function for random numbers that is equal to, you know, equal rand and parenthesis function. Click on the cell I20, this one I20, and press F9 key few times and you will see how the random number here will generate, will regenerate it. And keep in mind that the random numbers are always between 0 and 1 because we are generating the probabilities, probabilistic numbers. So you, I don't know what is it in your screen at the moment, but just click on I-20 column and keep pressing F9. Does the number change on your screen, guys? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You, you clearly see that you also check the profit and the revenue now. Because now our function is, as you see here, it is no, sir. revenue is your thousand. No, no. Any issues? Yes, please. Mine is not refreshing. I20 F9 is not refreshing. Probably your add-ons are not properly added. That might be the reason because exact same stuff working for other people. Then it means that there is something wrong with your system. Click on enable editing and then it will work. I've clicked on enable editing. But let me let me just close refresh. Let me start do everything again. Let me yeah, see. yeah, yeah. Please. Yeah, it, it's supposed to work even without the add-ins because before I installed the add-ins, it was already working. So. 
I think I don't think it's related to the add-ins. Yeah, but what what will be related to add-ins will be like the following sheets. Yeah, yeah, of course. The ge generating the profit functionality, probability distribution functions. Yes. But and, and anyway, coming to sheet two, as I told, you know, once you keep pressing on F9, you will clearly see that because now our function is dependent on revenue is equal to a certain amount plus random number times thousand. We have a new function. So you will clearly see that as our number is between zero and one, the generated random number, if it is zero, then it means that our revenue will be thousand because it will be thousand plus zero times thousand, which means equal to thousand. Or if it is one, let's say, it will be thousand plus one times thousand. So all in all, our revenue will change between thousand and the two thousand. So each time you press F9 on random number generator, you will see a different change on profit and the revenue itself. Okay, let's move on to the third one. Sorry, sir. Yes, go ahead, please. Yeah, just observation because I found out the solution for my own laptop. I think I have to press FN. There's a key called FN. I have to press it first before F9. So if anybody has that kind of laptop, yeah, it, 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 it might depend on laptop to laptop for F9 functionality. Yes, just in case anybody has that kind of laptop, that's why. Yes, go back and for everyone, just can you try it if it is the same issue with your laptops, with your setting? Yeah, I think it's good. I was not supposed to change it, my screen, but let, let me do it. So for if the ones still unable to see it, how we do it, you know, we just simply press F9. So you just look at this number, the random number here. I am simply changing it. You see, it was something 0 0.8. Now it is 0 0.7 something. So the revenue is now 1,720 pounds. But as I change this random number as coefficient, the revenue and therefore the profit will change. Let me change it once more. Just look at the numbers on my screen, especially for the ones who can't change their numbers. I am going to change it again. You see, from 1,700, now the expected revenue is 1,127. Each time I change it is a new simulation. So each time we change it, we record the expected revenue. And let's say we run this simulation million times and then we get the average. The average will be an indicator number of what we can expect in terms of revenue. The more trials we have, the closer we get to the reality. Okay, guys. I am changing the number once again. So you see, those are just random numbers that we just need to take a note on. And we will see how it those are accumulated in each time. Those are, for example, for this one, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 simulations recorded. This one recorded, then pressed F9 for second one, revenue recorded. You see, it, it is going between one, 2000 and 1000, anytime in between, anywhere in between. So the costs are fixed. Profits are changing, therefore the revenues are changing. And the random numbers allocated to those have been noted here. Okay, so and what we simply do is I we just... Now when you click on sheet one, 
um, it will have a link with C2, right? Yes, obviously. OK, thank you. No worries. And what we do here, you know, we just get minimums of profits and maximum of profits. And we just calculate the standard deviation and the average values. We showed you in previous weeks how to calculate the standard deviation and how to calculate the average, the mean values. All right, everyone clear until now. We just simply yes, generated numbers randomly through pressing F9 and we just noted them down here. And simply how we did it. The minimum is the minimum value of those, which is 66 in my screen. Because the numbers are generated, it might be different on your screens, the different values. But still, it will take the minimum value of it. You get my point. And for the maximum, still, you know, this is the min function for minimum. We put simply equal and min, and then we select the range. And when we come to maximum function, it is simply max function, M-A-X, and then the range from this one to this one. And how we do the average? Simple. Equal sign and then average, we type average and then in parentheses we simply put the range. We are want we are willing to take the average function. And the standard deviation. We showed you how we calculate it manually, but in Excel it is automated. We simply put the function of STDEV stands for standard deviation and in parentheses against we want the range and then we press enter and it will depict the standard deviation for the given range. Okay guys, now we are skipping to sheet four. We have now extended our simulation to 100 replications. Before on sheet 3 it was 10 replications. Now on the fourth one we have extended it to 100 replications. We have also added a frequency table and the chart on the right. So these are the frequencies. So how many times we came across we simply, you know, in the videos also you have seen how we define the ranges. So rather than getting exact readings, we are defining it in a cross with the ranges. So from 0 to 100, we just came across in this screen, we came across zero times. For anything between 100 till 200, we observed values of profits, let's say ranges, we observed it 10 times. For let's say 800 till 900, any number in between, we observed it nine times according to this chart. But as you see, the profit chart is dynamic and these frequency values and everything will change. Whenever we change a random number here, for example, I am coming on G17, let's say. Okay, G17 column, I pressed on it. And I am pressing F9 and you can observe how the table will change accordingly. 
and how the frequency levels will change as well because this is something between 300 and 400. So those values will change. And you will see a change on profit chart as well. You see, every time I'd run a new simulation, the chart differentiates. It should happen on your screens as well. If you can, you know, properly r run the F9 function on any random number given. So for each simulation like this, we take a record of the values. So let's move on with the current situation or let's try to get something else so that it will look like more uh, bell shape. So let's move on. So the, uh, the rest will change. Yes, we have some peaks here so that let's move on to the next sheet. And you clearly see that the frequency values and everything is changing. But remember, we are having now 100 different simulations. So this is done 100 times. Okay, for 100 times, everything is recorded in the profit chart. And we are just looking for the distribution values, which we had in the past weeks. You remember the distribution types, triangular distributions, bell-shaped distributions, and things like that. Now we are coming to that section on sheet five. Let's move to sheet five. We now want to consider the different probability distributions. Previously, we assumed that the revenue would be anything between 1,000 and 2,000. This me, is an example of a uniform probability distribution. Any value between 1,000 and 2,000 is equally likely. But in practice, this is usually unlikely because some values are more likely than the others. For example, a revenue of 100 sorry, 1,500 might be considered most likely. We can model this with the normal probability distribution. What I want you to do is just to click on data. This is the data. You see it on top ribbon of your Excels. Because previously, you were not, if we didn't amend our Excel, the data is hidden it wouldn't be appearing on your screens. But now you can just click on data. Just follow the instructions, click on data, select data analysis, you click on data, and then you clicked on data analysis towards the right. All right, guys, just follow the instructions. And once you click on it, you will come across with a random number generation. And it will look like something like this, random number generation function. This is a sample of the screen. Okay, guys? So you simply click on data on top ribbon and move towards the very right on data analysis. And then you simply select the number, the random number generation. And you simply apply the values you see on the screen because we want it to be most likely one. Because in the given example, we want we, we, we want the 1,500 1, to be the most, most likely one, which means that it should be a mean one. It is most likely to come across. 
You simply put exact same values here in your random generator, random number generator. You simply enter the values you see on the screen. And then once it is done, you simply click on OK. Can you guys all see your data button on top ribbon? It should be there because we already did the adjustments. In past year, I think it was Dr. Hazar, he put a note on the Excel here and he wanted to explain it, to make a note on this one, but we, I already made it at the very beginning. We already applied the add-ons, so your data button on top ribbon should already be there. And once you click on data, then you need to select data analysis, and then after clicking it, you just simply click on random number generator. And it is this window. And on this window, we simply gave you a case. All you need to do is just to apply the numbers to follow the case on your screen. And then simply enter OK. Hold on, sir. Hello. Don? Okay, sir, just to, just to clarify everything step by step, the number of variables is the number of iterations, while the number of random numbers is the range. Exactly. Okay, then for the output range, I can see C16. Yes. Must it be the beginning of the iterations, or we can click on any empty cell? Yes. Which one, please? It is, you see, it is C16. So it is providing output from this range until the end value. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. So Not you sir. initiate the starting point. This is meaning that. Okay. Have you guys applied the values on the screen and clicked OK? Yes, sir. Then let's move on to the next sheet. Again, we have now extended our simulation to 100 replications. We have also added a frequency table and the chart on the right. Those are the results of the values we have introduced in ran true random number generation this time. Normally, we were doing it through F9, but this is the way how we do it manually. All right, guys. So we know that now, let's coming back to sheet four. We know how random number allocation and accumulating them will provide us a final accumulated value. And we will get frequencies and then we can generate our profit chart. And the more simulations we have, the more improvements we have. I am just changing it here, but you know, 
we should be doing it without unchanged. We generate it once as if we have done like that, if we can do it like manually for each simulation, or alternatively, we can do it by pressing simply F9. And in each run, after pressing F9, we should take a note of each random number so that we generate the profit values for each. And simply, we took a frequency values for each value we obtained here, and then we can generate our profit chart. And then based on this, in the previous weeks, if you remember, we know how to fit our curves in the graphs. There are parameters for that. And then we can identify by just looking at it. For example, if it's a bell shaped, even you know, without doing any calculations, for example, by this example for example you invest thousand pounds and you are expecting something in it in return for the given example you wouldn't be expecting after running this simulations you wouldn't be expecting let's say a thousand and hundred profit because it is very least likely even in this one it is like zero but even if it was one only it would be very limited so what you would expect, the more likely you would expect something around like 400 or something around 700 or something in between. Those are graphically the most likely ones. This is how you read the graphics, how you interpret the graphics. Or let's change one number randomly. Again, I'm just pressing F9. And now we see, you know, the most likely one, we will get around 100 pounds. But keep in mind, I am just changing one number only. If I changed all of them, it will probably look like a bell shape. Whether it is like skewed towards the left or skewed towards the right, it will have a prominent, dominantly peak level. So we can be speaking about the profitability levels in a more clarified manner. I know it may sound a little bit complicated in the first instance, but by modeling the probability values and noting them down, what we are doing literally is we were looking at every possible outcome that might happen then we are just trying to identify which ones are the most likely ones. And then we can simply interpret the most likely ones as our expected outcome of the project. For this one, it was profit. And for the previous one, it was the project timeline. I will double check the Excel sheet with Dr. Hazar and re-upload it to the system and you can practice it yourself. But it is same analogy, applying randomness. In this case on the screen, lab four, it is dealing with the profits. For the previous one, it was the duration. It was the only difference between two exercises. And the outcome of this tutorial today First thing, we have got now adjusted our excels that we can work towards our like coursework in PRM. I don't know what exactly your coursework is, but for sure you need add-ons activated so that you can finalize your studies. That is the first take home for today. And secondly, you now know how you can create the frequency tables, how to note them down. You just simply generate it and then you define the ranges. The videos I provided in the morning clearly defines how you obtain the frequency values for defined ranges. If I'm not wrong, it should be on the very first video. So you are now good to go 
to work towards your assignment. Any questions up until now? Because I have to leave in around five minutes before I catch the other group. Okay, sir, be, please, before you go, I don't know if maybe you mentioned it and I might skip it, but these random numbers, yeah, because I can see it's we started from sheet one, but yep. after sheet four, we didn't have random numbers anymore. So I'm trying to figure out the um, what to relate it to the random numbers, the role. The role now, is you know, know each one of them are the possible outcomes. Correct. If we done it thousand times, each one of them can happen as an outcome of our project. Imagine like I am throwing a dice each time. I roll the dice, it might come up one. I roll it again, it might come up like three. I roll the dice again, it might come up three again. So out of three trials, the frequency was two times three. So I simply, from this time, ranges are for the dice. There are only six possibilities, right? So we simply write one, two, three, four, five, and six. And for frequency, let's let's assume I rolled it six times, and the frequency for one was only one, but for two, it never happened, probably. So I put simply zero. This is the randomness. Those are the likelihood of the outcomes that might that we might see at the end of the project. We can end up with 400 pounds of profit if everything goes well, of, or if we face something in the middle, we might end up with 34 pounds only. You see, those are all possible likely issues. But what we are after is, for example, we just collect the random outcomes and we try to obtain a chart like this, a frequency indication like this. So we are after how many times that likelihood stuff happened. For example, for the given one on my screen, what would you expect? Would you expect like 100 pounds at the end of the project by looking at it because that happens more often? Or would you expect 500? Which one of those are more likely in your opinion? You get my point because we observed by doing simulations, we see that it is more likely that we end up with profit of 600. It is more likely than ending with 500. And how we classify that random numbers, why, how we are making use of it? Because we know the standard deviations of our each task or each activity. That is how we make use of it. You know, it is random, but it is not unconditional random. We classify it in accordance with the variance they are having so that we can generate this graph. Otherwise, it would be useless. It will be like fully random. What we generate is a coefficient number, but after generating the coefficient randomly, we then put it in a function like this. For example, the function is defined here. Revenue is a base number plus random number times thousand. This is our function. So the revenue might never be low, might never be below a thousand unless that one becomes a negative number. So this is something might happen. Okay, that random number is our scenario, let's say. If the prices of oil in Nigeria stays the same, this is the thing we can come across. But let's say if due to climate issues, 
or any logistics issues, the price in Nigeria goes up. This is another scenario, and this is the one for the scenario I have mentioned. This is the randomness of it happen. Or it could be another scenario. Let's say the climate values are completely different and which may lead to a output like this. So those are all, all unknowns we are trying to predict. That is why we are dealing with random numbers. Anything can be happen. So what we are doing is trying to define what all those entity issues are. So each time I generate a random number is a new scenario that might likely to happen. So the more scenarios we define, we will end up getting closer to reality. There is no either white or either black scenario. If it was, we would be just using two random number, just one black and one white. But we have shades of gray in between, isn't it? And we are trying to model it with randomness, whether it is a dark gray in between, whether it is a light gray in between, more whitish, more blackish. We are trying to model all the palette of colors. And depending on how many times we observe the values in between, for example, the more we observe any of them, let's say, number 70, possibility 70 is more frequently. Then at the end of our observations, we would see, okay, anything can happen in between, but that one is the most likely one to happen. So you plan your investment accordingly. You plan your team accordingly. You get my point, why we are using randomness. Yes, sir. I've on, I understand now, but just another thing, I something that might be confusing, it's the sheet one, the revenue is 2,000, while on this particular sheet, we used 1,000 to do the calculation. In this one, as I clearly explained, we didn't consider any uncertainty. It is okay. simply, we defined our condition as cost is equal to, sorry, profit is equal to Revenue minus the cost. There is no uncertainty in sheet one. If there is no uncertainty, we don't need to make use of any randomness because everything is apparent here. It is A minus B. That's it. But in real life, it is not the case. We are not living in an ideal world. So that is why on sheet two, this time we are introducing a coefficient because you know do you know that you know each time for example i charge my phone it will take exactly 30 minutes to charge it do you know it are you sure mm. it depends on multiple different parameters isn't it depending on the room temperature depending on the voltage on the net electricity network it could be like 221 it will still work it will still charge or it could be 214 let's say it will still charge your phone but it will take longer isn't it that is why we need the randomness and that is why for example in the booklet of this phone you will see that your phone will charge approximately in 30 minutes. But in some of you, it will take 29. Some of you, it will take 32, blah, blah, blah. But the average of all those scenarios is calculated is yeah, as 30. And they are using exact same simulations to give you an average value. You get my point? We are just trying to engage outer factors by applying random because we cannot consider everything we cannot consider that the weather tomorrow will be let's say 35 degrees we don't know because it didn't happen yet we are just 
modeling every scenario, whether it is 30 degrees tomorrow, whether it is 31 degrees tomorrow, whether it is 35 degrees, whether it is 40 degrees tomorrow, everything is becoming one of our random values. You get my point? Is it clearer now? So you're, you're the best, sir. You're the best, sir. It's very, very clear right now. Thank you so much. Okay, no worries at all. I know it might sound a bit complicated, but once you get the notion of it, it will be very much clear. As I told, a simple example from our daily lives, you know, normally it should take 30 minutes to charge it, but let's assume the room temperature here is a bit cold. It will take longer. Or the, imagine you are living in a hot climate and a proper decent electricity network in your house no voltage variations so you will charger might exactly fill this one in 30 minutes but if the conditions change it might take 31 minutes it might go down to 29.7 minutes all variations are possible and the most likely one is the one that is written on your booklet when you buy the a phone. It says exactly the average value. They test it in different multiple conditions. For example, they test it in 10,000 different occasions and they give you the average outcome of those randomness because each case they apply is a new case, a new scenario. And you can imagine that as a new random outcome because they test it in random environments and they come up with a guidance as 30 minutes, let's say. All right, guys. I have to leave now to catch the other group, but if you guys have any issues, we can you can ask me through email or let's say the following lecture, the following tutorial is starting in 10 minutes. You already know the you know, first part of it. Let's say after 40, 45 minutes, you can rejoin. So uh, we, we are going to cover the same exact stuff in the following one. It's up to you. Or you can alternatively drop me exact questions if you have, and I'll try to answer them through emails. And I'll try to make sure that the Excel sheet is working. I'll deal the issue with Dr. Hazar and we'll make sure that there is a proper working Excel sheet for the uh, lab three. OK, let me see what you guys are typing in the chat. I see many people have understood, but as I say, let me repeat it once again. If you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. We will cover them all. You know my email, so you can just drop me an email. And if it is a common issue that I believe, if it is a very you know concerning question that you guys have, I can even post the answer on Aula so that everyone can benefit from that. So guys, thank you very much for joining me today and I need to leave to catch the other group. Thank you all and bye now. Thank you, sir.